All right. So it looks like, actually, both of them don't have their oil caps. So they both need oil caps. And in the description it said that both these saws had um, missing parts and their anti-vibration mounts aren't working or bent so we'll uh, as we're as we're building these saws we'll um, sort all that sort of stuff out together and um, since we actually have a spark plug and carburetor for one of the saws or do we have a carburetor for both saws might have carburetors for both saws I think I misjudged the uh, situation friends so um, we'll have a look at um, sorting out carburetor kits for them instead of actual carburetors and I will be taking the saws to um, my Husqvarna shop that I go to and we'll sort out what I need and what I don't need and we'll uh, go from there. Apart from that they look to be reasonably tidy saws. Um, they just need just need clutches and and um, side covers and um, and the sprocket and the sprocket drum and a ah, looks like one of these saws or maybe both of these saws might use those um, side cover ad um, chain adjusters so I don't know one saw's got its bar adjuster the other one doesn't so, seems like the 395 has the chain brake on the side cover where, or I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I um, don't really know much about the... Uh, 345 and the 240 um, apart from the fact that they're both um, around about 40 40 to 45 cc saws um, I, I looked up what what the cc rating for this saw was and it was a 38 point two or something like that and this one is a 45 I can't remember what the other part of it was but it's a 45 cc and a 38 cc um, this one seems to have fairly good compression 
Um, as I take them apart, I, I will clean them and sort all that sort of stuff out. But, um, clean everything up on both the saws and and um, take everything apart and see how they tick um, I generally wouldn't uh, work on saw, saws that are so small but um, these two saws are what I could afford at the time to start off with so and you, ha you have to work uh, start somewhere and stuff like that as they say so I'm starting with a 45cc which for me personally, I'm not as fussy as some of the other saw builders, so I'm flexible enough to work on at least 40 to 45 cc and higher. Um, I'll, I'm happy enough to work on any saws as big as. Um, 90 to 100 cc and as small as 40 cc so anything smaller than 40 cc I'm not interested in working on um, and that's and that's just me you guys can do whatever you want for your first saws and stuff like that and or for whatever you want to do on your channels. So, let's have a bit of a look here and see if we can't start taking some of this saw apart. Guys, I'll just move you in so you're a bit closer so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Yesterday when I was at my chainsaw shop, I was told to just uh, ignore stuff like the bearings and all that sort of stuff on on the smaller saws because they're just not worth doing and and so something this small is just a throwaway saw. Well. I'm sorry fella but I disagree so if you ever end up seeing this video I respectfully disagree with you I, I will acknowledge that the reason why he told me that 
to ignore the bearings on a sm small saw like this is because um, it's a small saw and generally a small saw like this probably would be just a throwaway saw because you can just get a cheap chainsaw for, from a place like Bunnings or the warehouse or Mitre 10 or one of those places that sells a saw that's just a piece of crap. And you can generally get those for like two to three hundred dollars. But if you're a real saw person like me, you'll pay the ex you'll um save up the money and spend the extra cash on a proper branded chainsaw like um, Husqvarna here or steel or um, if you or if you're looking for a decent 45 or a 50 or 60 cc saw but um, you can't afford the top end prices that um, you get with still on Husqvarna you can always go something like Echo or Shindawa they're pretty decent saws not as good as Husqvarna and the other brands but they're um, I think they'd still be worth getting in my book because if you can't afford the expensive brands get whatever you can afford And as Buckin says, don't let anyone tell you you can't because you know you can. And you're allowed to. You do what you want to do, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. While I'm talking about Buck and Billy Ray Smith, I'll do a quick shout out to him. He's a fabulous guy. He probably would never be interested in working um, working with a saw with such a small saw, but you know that's that's his choice. He he want he likes his. Um, 1010 metallics and stuff like that. Um, as far as I know, there's something like 50 or 55 cc saws, 60 plus when they're ported. Or I could be wrong. They might be 60 cc saws and they're 70 cc saws when they're ported. Um, I don't know as much as about him as the mug as about the metallics as he does, but you know. Um, if he ever sees this, if you ever see this um, video back in, um, I love and respect you, and I'm getting into saw building because of you and the Tin Man, and I'll also give a shout out to Tin Man and Iron and Harvey at, at the Iron Horse and I'll give a shout out to Ryan at um, Wolf Creek Saw Shop I haven't done any dealings with him yet but I'm hoping pretty soon I will be and hopefully I'll be able to 
sort out some stuff for my for some future saws that I get. I am looking at getting a um, 365 um, Husqvarna assembly kit. Um, it doesn't have everything, it just has the the bottom end and and the um, gaskets and a few other things. I'll do a video on that when when I've got it and I'll just like Tin Man's doing at the moment, I'll take you through the journey and I'll um and and even we can build it together. We probably won't do as good a job as Tin Man, but Tin Man, if you're ever watching this video, rock on brother. Starting this journey thanks to you, so let's see what else we can't pull apart. How about friends we find the other screwdriver? Take this off and no, she's dry. Uh, looks looks reasonably good. Might need to take the. Uh, fuel filter off and give it a bit of a clean out but apart from that it still looks pretty good so we don't need to touch that for now Start off by taking off the uh, taking off the handle. Make sure that we keep everything for these saws with the saws that they come off so I might have to try and sort out some boxes for these chainsaw parts and um,
we're going to have to, you know, we'll have to address these dogs and we'll, because have a look at how small those dogs are, friends. Even though it's a small saw, still needs, still going to need some decent sized dogs on it. So we'll friends that's when it was made and it was made in Sweden so it's a legit Swedish saw Isn't that just good going? Ooh. Hmm. Didn't know I saw the small needed a compression switch. We're gonna have to address that. Why does a 45cc need compression switch? I might be missing something, but I think a compression switch is just too small for a saw. Uh, is a little too overkill for a saw this small. anyone has any ideas on why a 45cc has a compression switch leave it in the description below leave it in the comments trouble to figure out where to go from here. Um, Husqvarna uh, 36 was my first ever saw when I when I was probably about 14 or so, 14 or 15 back in 1997, and. Uh, I know this isn't a um, Yamaha, but I'm using some Yamalu.
probably should be using um, something like CRC but I don't have much WD-40 left and I don't have any CRC left which is something I probably should have sorted out before I um, started working on this um, little Husqvarna or Husqvarna um, hang on friends I'm just gonna turn us off again and I'm gonna grab the air compressor and I'm gonna give this young lady a bit of a blowout. <laughs> 